Hello, hello, and welcome to One Click Factory Central Eastern Europe Community Partner Gathering, monthly gathering. As we have promised, we have a gift for you, a survey conducted by One Click Factory. Because One Click Factory, a CSP indirect provider for Central Eastern Europe, is keeping the promise. We are not here to only sell you licenses, CSP licenses, but we are here to help you increase your dynamics share increase your dynamics business and this month we decided that we will invest additionally and we will interview the top partners from the region to understand what tactics do work for their customers in central eastern europe the report is ready and we are ready to share it you are more than welcome to download it in the downloadable sections right in your uh, in the corner uh, of your right uh, you will find full reports of what your fellers or your competitors has shared and i'm pretty sure that uh, some tips you will uh, you will find valuable or at least you can compare on how are you doing among the others what others think uh, uh, around the same topic as well and it might be that it was you who have contributed to the survey itself as it was more than 30 partners that we uh, talked to uh, during the last uh, month were uh, in the 12 countries. So top partners from each um, uh, country. As always, we would like to have this en engagement um, uh, live and active. So please be active, ask questions, share. Uh, if you don't agree with the survey results of what other partners uh, have shared, please say that uh, in the chat. Uh, the panelists will be ready to take the stage and to answer your questions or to comment. And of course, uh, your feedback is valuable for us as well. We will bring that to the next discussions uh, and maybe to other topics that uh, we have for other monthly discussions. And before I introduce you to the panelists that we have today, as always, we're going to have a partner and then one click factory experts. I would like to make some fun and have some poll. Before you have downloaded the report and before you know the answer of what your peers uh, uh, has thought, please let us know what do you think in your mind? What is the key driver for the customers uh, to have them stick to your customer? Is that um, ability for a customer to contact your consultant directly? Or maybe it's your competence and experience? Or maybe it's value and brand of your organization that uh, is most valuable and, and treasure that company has or discounts and vouchers that uh, works the best. So let us know and please uh, let's check the results already. Okay, we are, so now I see that the, resu uh, the results uh, are changing. So far, the partner competence and experience uh, is kind of leading, but we will see. We will see the results of what other partners from Central Eastern Europe uh, thought, and then uh, uh, we will see whether that match your expectation. And with that, I am ready to introduce the three panelists that uh, we have uh, with us uh, today. Sandra Matulevichuta Bagnanavicina uh, is um, a customer a partner experience ma uh, manager at uh, One Click Factory. Sandra, I am very happy to have you on board. If I am not mistaken, you were one of the first uh, customer experience certified uh, professionals in Central Eastern Europe. This is a new trend that is going on worldwide, right? Not only in Central Eastern Europe. Why is this topic suddenly became so important? And um, why do suddenly partners and customers shift it to that direction? Uh, good day. Uh, many companies uh, probably realize nowadays that they compete uh, less and less with unique product features or price alone as uh, these components could be very easily compared and copied by competitors. Uh, and what makes customers uh, to come back, to stick around is, uh, is actually this overall impression, overall perception of your company, of your services, which is actually formed by every touch point that, is cu that customer is going through and every person that, uh, that in the organization that your customer is contacting with. So we call this overall impression a customer experience nowadays. And it's mainly about how to be a successful business through better listening to your customers, better understanding uh, their expectations and uh, their problems they might be facing. And uh, 
building practices and organization how to work with that how to fulfill uh, those expectations actually this uh, customer experience thing becomes like uh, uh, the most durable competitive advantage nowadays, which is unique to every organization and which is really hard to copy. That's why it's it's important today. So I guess uh, if it was your choice, you would have added a fifth element into the poll, customer experience. I think that we are covering uh, some of the aspects, most important as aspects, like listening to the customer's loyalty aspect in this webinar. So, of course, it's much, much broader discipline that, that we can talk and talk. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we I, uh, we will dive deep into this. Uh, how do we contain? How do we ensure that customer is happy during these touch points that you have described in the process? The second panelist on board is Irin Vidasaulis, who is managing uh, the hosting platform, self-provisioning uh, hosting platform of NEV and BC and the Business Central at One Click Factory. We have uh, more than 160 partners using the service and more than probably Rindas, how many customers do we have on board? Uh, what is the number of uh, customers <laughs> that you deal with uh, every day with your partners? So last last time I checked, it was like uh, 1,300 plus uh, with like 20,000 users within those customers. So that's quite an plus. That's quite a number. And every time we speak, you mentioned that uh, uh, assuring the successful recurring revenue, and this is recurring business, a straight re recurring business is different than managing profit, uh, project based business. What elements should be there, the ones that you are mentioning? So, definitely. So, subscription business should be sustainable business, right? So, the, the key word is sustainable, which means you may have like a very small profit every month. But if you build it sustainable, if you make it long term, it will make a great business uh, for you as a provider, and it will uh, and it will create a, definitely a loyalty sentiment for your customers. So, so you need to basically uh, you know build that uh, sustainability path for 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 your for your partners for for your customers, which might be a little bit in contrary to project business where you have like on and off uh, mode, right? You have a big project. Probably a big, you know, uh, you know, money contract, and then you're gone. You're basically searching for for another project. Uh, in both cases, customer satisfaction and loyalty is important because in in, in both cases it, it it helps you to continue this uh, business success. Right? It's just that uh, the subscription business you should look more as a long term, and you build the strategy to retain those customers for the long term. And then subscription business as well can be. Now, from one side, when we when we discuss about subscription and cloud, we, we always try to say that, you know, it, it's a very sticky business. If you get the customer, they can be with you for a number of years. But on the other side, they can just leave you like after the first month if you do the crappy job, if you do not you know, create a sentiment, right? So that that's, uh, that's I think, the, the biggest difference between project and the subscription business. And it's very different from the project. Well, the majority of partners that I have talked to said that, well, we almost don't have any customer churn, which means you that's what you said. You get a customer, it, it kind of sticks to you. But it's not the case in the subscription business, probably, as it's quite easy to replace the partner. Or is it not true? Uh, it depends, of course, on the service, but definitely it. it the, the whole essence of the cloud service, it should be easy, you know, to, to buy and should be easy to, you know, change the provider, right? So whenever you do some, some faulty moves, you can very easily lose your, your customers. Yeah, that's correct. Thank you. So looking forward for your insight. And lastly, but not least, it's Rainis Parents uh, re representing partner Elva, Strategic Development Manager at Elva Latvia. Rainis, can you introduce what Elva is doing? You have been on the market uh, for quite long. What is the recurring business for you? What services do you have? And in general, how do you look at the loyalty? Uh, hi, everybody. Hi, Inga. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, particular uh, event. Uh, I'm representing Elva and uh, we are based and located in Latvia. And actually, we are doing uh, um, business with Microsoft Dynamics for more than 17 years. So it's uh, quite a long run. And uh, 
and um, there have been a different uh, times. Uh, and, and we actually started our journey towards curing business approximately seven years ago. And actually, it did not start with dynamics, but it started with, uh, with the Asia and with Office Suite. Uh, so, so basically, we started from a different angle. And uh, most of the partners, uh, especially among Baltics, uh, know that that the business central was uh, business central online business which is uh, one of our uh, core products uh, in latvia it was only introduced last april so uh, therefore uh, dynamics uh, business central online experience is really limited to that uh, particular time frame um, however as i as i mentioned we most as, as several years before we had started this uh, this recurring business uh, um, however, it's it's now again changing with uh, Business Central Online introduction, and so we have to get used to that that uh, the, the the situation in a market and with the product changes, and we have to be really really flexible. And uh, I honestly believe that the recurring business uh, model and this approach is here for the for the state. So. And, and we can see that in, in uh, a lot of business areas, not only in software, but it's, it's everywhere. So w whether you're turning to, to retail or you're turning to automotive business, it's everything. So, so, so the, the world is going to the recurring business. So when we have to think, we have to, to be creative, uh, face that and, and uh, introduce some new models, how to, how to work with that. Okay. Well, I'm very looking forward to see it, uh, for you to share the insight whether you would find the, the the results of the service that we have provided true for partners. You in this uh, scenario, you would be representing the view of partner in our discussion. Okay. So shall we dive deep then into the results that we have? As mentioned, the full report is there at your disposal in the downloadable session. But now we are going to look at the main points, um, the main areas of um, the this satisfaction and loyalty building and the first step is onboarding uh, with the onboarding questioning we really try to understand the how partners are doing onboarding whether they have already went into the automatization path uh, tried to build some demos uh, training materials um, uh, whether or is it still one-on-one -on -one engagement and out of what we have learned and what partners from central east and shared it's still one on one really individual um, uh, intensive time intensive engagement but yes quite many partners also um, uh, said that that they are, they are trying to combine, that uh, very often um, they have pre-recorded -pre demos, uh, they, they have uh, trials, uh, they have training materials. They, uh, some partners mentioned that they would like to give that away because it's too time consuming, but then they also admitted that it is customers in most of the cases that uh, demand this personal attention or the competitive market where you can't really do anything uh, if market has set a, a, a certain level of expectation. So now you know, the report says that um, uh, Individual uh, engagement is one-on-one -on -one is number one leading activity. Then we have onboarding call, uh, sometimes with pre-recorded uh, materials. Uh, we also still have some documentations pre-prepared, and in majority cases, partners uh, mentioned that they share that documentation afterwards. It's a save a little, a little bit of time and, and, and so on. Rainis, first of all, I would like to ask you, because once we had this uh, pre-session conversation, you mentioned that you also tried quite many automotive tools already, but not really did they work out. Some of them uh, might work out in the future, but not that many... Uh, uh, in the past. Can you comment on that? Of what is the best practices that you at Elva are doing at, uh, at the moment and what would be a recommendation? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I can confirm that uh, we are also the partner who are uh, in, in the beginning of the uh, recurring business and we are trying to understand what is working and what is not working and and, and how, to, how, how to make these uh, these things affected basically, and and uh, to be honest, the ind individual part there's always in this interaction. There's this individual part uh, where you have to interact with a with a, with a particular customer and uh, and and work with them. Uh, however, I what we see 
is uh, is the most effective uh, way how to do that, that, that those things we, we believe that uh, that uh, there should be a place uh, questionary for customers uh, about how they do their business in order just to ju just to get this information faster so you have to limit the amount of engagement that you have with the customers because uh, we we understand that every hour costs so we have to be at the most most effective as we can uh, to to get this uh, this up and running. So and uh, this will be, we, we would be one uh, particular recommendation. The second, uh, I think that uh, if you're focusing on some particular industry or area, you should have a pre set up solution. So which comes with a package, so it's easy to deploy. It's like next next finish, and you are up and up and running. That would be the second thing. And the third thing I would encourage to, to start recording short customer videos, three to four minutes long, so, uh, so that you can distribute them as soon as the customer is ready to, to do something. Uh, and, and this actually previously in the past uh, would not be possible um, because um, today, Microsoft moves to the more standardized approach. And the standardized approach actually allows you to, to shoot those videos and to record those videos because it's, it's not changing so substantially. So there, of course, there will be places where will, will, uh, will, uh, the functionality will change, but the basic uh, and, and the standard is, is, is here for the state. So I would recommend to, to do those videos uh, it will it will save time. Uh, customers are demanding those videos, and it's easier to distribute this information uh, with with that kind of approach. So this is uh, this is our recommendations, and this is the, the experience that we have. Though I have to mention, we are still on the way, and there's a lot of internal work to convince the consultants. To, to publish their voice, to, to record that. And you have to be really fast on doing that. And because again, this is efficiency. You have to do it fast and you have to be uh, really with the, with the first time you, you have to record that and, and distribute that. So, so there's, there's a lot still internal work to be done, but uh, we believe it's doable. Do you record these videos in Latvian language or in English? Because I think that would be another hassle for consultants to go through. <laughs> we, we, we are recording that in, in Latvian since our main customers or main customer areas in Latvia. And this is another, so to say, another angle of the so to say, struggle because the, the, if you're focusing on local markets, then the, the consumption of the product is really, so to say, not, the, the customer base is not so big. So you have to you have to cover that by your customer base. So and of course in in Latvian because uh, customers enjoy to 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 use the material in Latvian. And if yeah, we would right. focus to the UK market or to some other market, we will for sure record that in uh, in English and and make it make make it available there. Uh, however, then 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 again. It it um, it requires that you would have to have a native speaker with a voiceover and uh, and uh, well there's there's a lot of challenges towards that but I think it's doable. I think so too. I think so too. Rinvedas, what is about what about your experience? Because well, I know that at the moment One Click Fact is having quite intensive onboarding process, and I also know that we have uh, tried various ways to uh, to think of what can we do to optimize that. Sometimes they work, sometimes they not really work. So, what are your your main challenges? So I think we have tried a lot of ways you know, in in doing you know onboarding as effective as possible. And there's still a lot of uh, you know, options to, to be tried, to be honest, because as Rainy said, you no know, technologies are evolving and some of the things that were complicated to be done like you know three years ago, it's it's pretty it should be pretty easy now, right? But uh, but again, no, I'm I'm not sure from the audience in this call how how many there are partners who would have like I don't know 
tens of thousands of those customers, right? It's probably my guess in the dynamics world, there are might be tens of the customers, or maybe hundreds at, at maximum, right? Which means, and that's the same case for, for, for us in one click factor, right? Our customer is, is a partner and we have like 160 partners. So it's not like that massive scale of this onboarding exercise, right? We're not doing the onboarding, I know, five times per day to be honest, right? And if we're doing it five times per month, it's still, we're back to square one where this one-to-one -one onboarding still is possible and, you know, it matters, right? Whenever we would feel that it's too costly, we would probably stop doing that or we'll find another way to do that. But this one-to-one, -one, I don't know, especially in, in Central Eastern Europe, is, is, ex, is still extremely, extremely you know, uh, important. It is important, yes. On the, on the other side, right, you know, when, when your customer base grows, it would be stupid for, 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 for us and for any other partner not to build some kind of the knowledge base, right? Because, well, you do onboarding and some of the partners may forget what they've been told and they always need to have some, some reference, right? Now, the difference from what was no kind of trend there no, five years ago and now is exactly what Rainis was seeing, right? We, we, we see that the, the partners are kind of becoming maybe lazy to look into all those documentation and knowledge base articles to find you know, the, whatever they need to do, right? They would really like to have like short video, like three, four minutes video, how to do this and how to do that. And to be honest, in, at One Click Factory, we're not great at, at that. And, and uh, that's our, I would say, uh, strategy to build those, more of those videos, right? So as I said, now still a lot of stuff to be done now in, in the future. Uh, but this one-to-one, -one, if you do like, I don't know, five onboarding uh, you know, discussions or 10 onboarding discussions, uh, per month should, should I think should, should still be doable. I mean, it, it pays off. It pays off. Now this, this then you know when you do the onboarding, you not need to forget to you know the the second step, right? So it's not only onboarding. Onboarding doesn't end, you know, with the with the onboarding call, right? You need to collect feedback. You need to basically uh, catch up with your with your customer. You know how's it going? Is everything clear or maybe not? So so this personal touch. Could not could be not in the form of the call, but could be in the form of the email of the Teams chat, and anything else. All right, to, to keep you know this connection, right? Because again, especially in Central Eastern Europe, you know this personal touch is, is still very much valid. Right? People know like to know what they are talking to, and they would like to continue talking with the person. Well, if 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 they if they find the the common ground, yeah. So a lot of been tried. Still, a lot to be to be done in the future, and we are still spoiled for, at Central Eastern Europe. Yeah. We don't want to go to the ticketing systems and to talk to machines. We still want to know who is behind yeah. the scene. I, I would mean, agree with that, and this yeah. is what other partners shared. Them. Okay, uh, Rindidas, you touched a quite an important topic, and actually, it's uh, the second area uh, that we uh, tried to investigate and see how other partners are doing. So how do we maintain relationship? Now we are talking about recurring revenue, about uh, probably in majority of cases about subscription-based revenue with quite small margins on top. How do we make sure that we don't lose customers on the way, that we pay attention to them and what are, how, what are partners doing? The goal that we at Only Factory wanted to have a look at, whether partners have a strategic approach, a proactive uh, approach, or is it more a reactive approach? And based on what partners shared, <clears throat> almost uh, uh, quite many of them admitted, yes, we should get be better at this. So just like Rainis and Rimvida say, yeah, we know that we should do this. We're not uh, there yet. So quite many said that we have regular meetings, but these regular meetings, they are not on the proactive basis. That's mo in most of the cases, it's customer calls or they need something from us. And that's how we interact and get in touch. And in case uh, we didn't hear from customer in a year, then we'll make sure that we contact and ask if everything uh, is all right at his side. Then uh, also, I was happy to hear that quite uh, many partners are doing industry events. Uh, again, pandemic changed things a little bit, so they are not uh, really um, they, are, they are not able to organize these live conferences for their customers as they used to. 
And they are also questioning whether webinar type of events are still interested for customers. Quite many partners said that these uh, webinars are going down and they are trying to find what is the best solution to replace them. Uh, but um, uh, just like Rinveda shared, Central East and Europe partners said personal touch is very important. So we try to have this connection, personal gifts or informal meetings uh, and so on. Rainis, uh, at your site, what would you pro what would be uh, your feedback uh, on, on that? Would you find that uh, true for your case as well? What are other things uh, that El Elva is doing uh, to maintain the relationship uh, with your customers? Maybe it's not a huge list of customers yet, but we're still if talking about the future. It we have to think that it would be a mass number of customers waiting in line. <laughs> Well, uh, what what we are uh, what we are doing actually in order to maintain the relationships. Uh, so we, we 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 first we first of all we we try to understand whether the customer is using a solution in in general. So so we are on the way of uh, of using uh, telemetry data. So just to understand uh, is this customer using an app the system and so on and so on. This would be one aspect. But the the second aspect we are we are using. Uh, um, so let's say we, we are creating a service and on, on a regular basis asking customer about the feedback. Uh, though, uh, though, though what we have faced that uh, regularly the, the reply of, of the base is approximately 30 to 35%, no more. So it means that the 65% are data are unknown. So we don't we don't know what those particular customers think. So so and and then as as mentioned, yeah, it's a regular meetings with a customer. So you are calling again one to one, uh, catching up um, and and understanding if everything is okay, is what what is needed. Well, basically, yeah, the, what we have done as well. On top of that, um, we are creating a, a webinars or or this kind of online events just to sh show and tell about uh, newest possible things, industry, new aspects, inviting uh, customers to speak and so on. So basically trying to, to, to create an engaging content, uh, content with a uh, value that uh, we can share with the customers. So actually, I think that uh, within the last three to five years, nothing much has changed uh, on, under that topic. Uh, uh, though I, I must say that, that the video is, is getting more and more popular. That would be one that I have to outline. Have you noticed that webinars popularity uh, is decreasing? Would you agree to partner uh, comments on this? I, I would say ye yes, it decreases. And I think that uh, uh, customers want to, to have the content on demand. So there's mm -hmm. when, when they need it, they're searching, and it, it has to be available. And uh, this 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 has been changed. And um, yeah, yeah, I I, I agree. Rinveda, so you have 160 partners, right? How do you assure that all of them are treated equally, and none of them are forgotten, or is it even possible to uh, treat everybody equally? Yeah, it's very simple. You know, just go and drink two beers with every customer and you know you maintain the relationship <laughs> of course I'm, I'm kidding so so that has as much as i would like to have a beer with every partner that uh, we have you know first of all my probably stomach is not that strong anymore but uh, more important you no know, is this COVID and pandemic situation which kind of forced us to have those this long distance relationship with our with our customers right so the last time I, I had a beer with one of our partners was, was was probably a year ago. Yeah, so that definitely definitely you know uh, doesn't help. Now, uh, uh, well, from our perspective, and I here have to agree with with, with Rainis, we do have those uh, let's say regular uh, uh, webcasts with with our partners. The popularity of them uh, is actually decreasing. But uh, the views of those, uh, you know, webcasts, the, the views of the recordings is not decreasing. This means that, you know, maybe you shall not expect your partner to, you know, join the call at the exact time of the exact date, right? But you still need to have, you know, provide the content in this call that could be reviewed afterwards, right? 
We just need to make sure that those who haven't attended, they would they would know what was the content and uh, why maybe it's important or interesting for them to to review it. Right. So this is this is one of the learnings that we at One Click Factory you know had to, throughout the year. But coming back to the original question now, is it possible to have to treat all partners equally? No, of course not. And you shouldn't, right? Of course you should not treat you know, the, the partner who, you know, I don't know, brings you 10 euros uh, the same way as the partner or the customer that brings you, I don't know, 1 million euros, right? Should, it would be stupid not to, to, to spend as much time uh, on, on everyone. However, those newcomers, like the new partner, the new customers, you, you basically recruit. Of course, you, you spend unproportionately more of the time uh, with, with them. But, uh, but that should pay off. Right? The first impression, the first uh, experience should be, should be very, very it, it is very important. It was very important, I don't know, five years ago, and it is, it's still very important uh, now. So, um, yeah, I mean, the new, Customers, you will spend on proportion to a lot of time, and that's a gamble whether it will pay off in the future. But if you won't spend enough attention with those, uh, you know, uh, new customers, then probably they won't get, you know, into a long-lasting relationship with you. So that's yes. that's yeah. my thought. First impressions do matter, and it's important uh, to have that uh, if you want to have a long-term relationship. Sandra, what would be your view? So now uh, quite many partners are going internationally, so meaning that this uh, personal touch is not always available. But from customer experience, would you say it is important to have personal touch, or can you automate this and maintain the relationship in an automated way? Of course, uh, this personal touch, individual touch is important and probably one of the uh, most important drivers of customer satisfaction and loyalty is uh, uh, whether your customers feel valued and respected by the organization. And this individual attention, individual contact, personal attention uh, could be a kind of secret recipe of making your customers uh, feel like that. And I believe that uh, so many organizations now are going to digital direction and self-service direction with less and less human contact. Uh, but I still think that we should not lose this human uh, contact fully and to make sure that at least at the most uh, critical moments, at the most problematic moments for, for, for your customers, uh, your customers are served by humans. And I think that uh, doing this uh, human uh, touch point uh, well, you can even set your organization uh, apart, create a competitive advantage in all this massively self-service and digital business. Yeah. So Short no, no way side. to get rid of personal attention. Of uh, the hint to partners is that you have to have this in mind. Okay. But I, I would also like to add to, to Sandra, right? Again, from our perspective, our service is called self-provisioning platform, right? So the, the idea is that partners should be able to do as much as possible themselves, right? So it's it's self-provisioning, right? However, you know, when this personal touch becomes extremely important, when there are some I would say non-standard situations and non-standard requests, right? Where the self-service wouldn't work, right? And then that's where you can basically show your, your human attitude to your customer. If they're asking something non-standard or if they want some, I don't know, exception. Of course, you need to have some boundaries for the exceptions because you know, that you wouldn't end up in only exceptions, well, right? But if, if you are able to, I know, make an extra effort, you know, to or, you know, extra answer the extra call from your customer, you know, I don't know, you have some extra advice, even if it's free, right? You don't need to charge for every advice. Then it becomes very, I would say, attractive for those customers. Then they see that it's self-provisioning, let's say automated platform. But if somebody, you know, is able to give, you know, the advice, if somebody is able to you know look and add extra efforts it's it's then it's 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 felt that you know this human touch is is is, 
is working. If you only have like a no auto answering machine with a human voice, no, that that wouldn't work, right? But no, this human touch should be human. Right? True, true. And you see, I had an, another slide on with the third area, collecting feedback. And all three of you have mentioned the feedback, the, the topic of feedback in one way or another. Uh, Sandra mentioned it's important to collect feedback after every interaction that partners are doing. Uh, Rainins mentioned that they are checking and um, they are after onboarding uh, and doing this quarter as a service, regular service. And Rivedas mentioned that it's important not to leave your customers behind, that after onboarding, you have to have a strategic approach. So this is another area where we dive deep and they're trying to understand how other partners are doing. And from what I share, what, what I heard, the personal approach uh, is still very valid. Yes, a majority, um, the, quite many the partners admitted that they're having regular uh, service, either quarterly or yearly or every month. Uh, some partners are doing that um, uh, uh, on the targeted basis that they're sending first uh, to C-level people and then to project managers, uh, to operational people. But then I also had uh, quite many of those sharing that uh, mm -hmm. Service do not provide a clear view. It's automated process. People don't value anymore. They simply fill in uh, the answers. Uh, so you don't really get that information, what you're looking for. So what uh, we learned out of this service, that partners are really taking this human approach. They, uh, they introduce escalation processes. They have one-on-one -on -one conversations. Um, if... Um, there is a process of weekly um, meetings where the team shares of what they what the feedback had they heard um, you know, from their customers. Uh, and even with the cases when managers are ready to pick up the phone and hear the issues that there are at customer side and are ready to solve those. So again, uh, Rainy, the question to you, what kind of sound is there? I, I hear some kind of sound. Is that at my side only? <laughs> is that at, at everybody's? No, uh, it's kind of silence here. Only your beautiful okay. voice. <laughs> <laughs> Super. And then it's my beautiful headset that I'm making some kind of strange, <laughs> strange noises. So, Rain, is a question to you. So, how do you collect this feedback? Uh, uh, how, how do you manage that? <clears throat> Well, to, to be honest, I, I can totally agree. And I think that, uh, well, the survey shows that 86% of the, of the, of the partners are collecting surveys from frontline uh, workers because it's, if, if you're interacting with the customer, so this is like really live feedback from, uh, from the, the customer and, and you have talked to that customer and serviced it and you, you ha have a feeling whether this uh, customer is, is, is satisfied or not. And, and, and with that kind of approach, if you're talking to the customer and doing interaction, this is the, the excellent way how to do that. Uh, what, what I would uh, recommend, we are currently not doing that, but uh, if you're interacting with the customer, maybe you should have like internal survey for the consultant. Hey, please rate with the net promoter score how likely that this customer would be recommending you to the other 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 customer. So, and you will have a so to say a temperature, and this temperature maybe is floating uh, uh, between month or something like that. So, so that will, that. That the system should be somehow in, in place that you're not like only calling your consultants and ha asking, hey, maybe you had a call with that customer like three months ago. What was that feeling? And, and so on. And and um, yeah, I think that the transactional feedback is, is a really, really good idea. However, we have to understand that uh, you have to somehow motivate the, the, the customer to do that, or that has to be really, really super fast and uh, to answer to that cust uh, customer question. Uh, and or, or you have to understand that at some point, maybe that customer will stop replying and, and uh, he has to understand why he's doing that. In order to improve your service, then he has to feel that your service is improving. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be my, my feedback. Uh, but uh, for sure, frontline workers, and if they're immediately doing the feedback, then this is the most precise way of, 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 of doing that 
in that particular case with that particular customer. Mm. Rimvidas, would that kill your? Are you picking up the phone at the middle of the night, as some <laughs> Central Eastern Europe partners do? <laughs> would that kill your profitability in business if you had yeah. this process in place? Uh, it may kill. It may not. Right. Uh, so, of uh, well, let, let let me share how do we do it at the one click factor, right? So so we have this option for the customers to to pick up the phone at, in the middle of the night and, and, and call in case really there is some disaster or something you know, happen, right? But that's a that's a chargeable service, right? And there's no, in most of the cases, there's no discussions whether it's fair to charge or it's not, right? When, when things heat up and they want some extraordinary service, it should not be, well, the expectation should be built that it's not for free, right? Well, unless you again want to kill your profitability, right? Or you want to invest into in, 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 into that uh, heavily, right? But uh, that that does not create a lot of problems for the customers to pay for that. In, in I would say majority of the cases, so there there is this option. But on the on the flip side, if you, if you are building, let's say, a, a mass uh, customer business. Um, you shall keep some boundaries into that, right? So, I mean, having a, a, a possibility to call every time for every problem mm, might might not be very, very great idea. However, this actually is very different from the geographies, right? Again, from Central and Eastern European partners, I don't see that much of that trend, to be honest, want to talk or want to call at every single uh, question, right? Maybe it's because there are so many different languages and I don't know, maybe a, somebody who is not that comfortable in, with English language, they would uh, prefer to just write an email or, or open the support request, right? It's especially with technical people, in, in many cases, they would prefer to do it like you know, online, not, not to chat. However, if we talk about doing business in the United States, yes, those guys, they like to call. Right. They like to call for every possible question, and uh, yeah, we we have some some I would I would say uh, challenges uh, with this approach over there. But in Central Eastern Europe, I think you need to have this possibility in case no, it is really needed. But uh, there should be other you know ways of communication uh, as well. However, you know. In my home market, still quite a few partners. They know my mobile phone number, and of course, I'm picking up if they're if they're calling. Right? I'm not saying no, 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 no. This type of the question you should call, and I'm not like, of course not. Right. I pick up I my phone it. for my friends. Yeah. So at One Click Factory, we're having the same approach as Central Eastern Europe partners. We pick up the phone <laughs> from people that we know. Yes. <laughs> Sandra, so Sandra, this is the year of your expertise uh, already. And I already mentioned that some partners don't see values in this uh, service and evaluations. What would be your comment around this? Do you think the value of the service of regular ones where a customer just fill in the data uh, are it decreasing? And how frequently this service should be done? Mm -hmm. In general, I think that uh, service, regular customer satisfaction service is, is a good starting point from, for many organizations to start understanding their customer's perception, uh, overall perception maybe about the company, about uh, your performance. And uh, to, to comment on this uh, note that some of the partners do not see so, ma so much of value as they receive only numbers, and don't know where to go with those numbers further. So I should say probably that uh, uh, we should probably not even expect that surveys will tell us all the answers, what needs to be fixed and, uh, and how to fix it. And we should look at uh, surveys uh, more as um, diagnostical tools, which can help to diagnose the biggest problems, the, big, uh, the most problematic areas in the services. And to one tell so much of the details. And if you need those details, and uh, if you want to understand the root causes behind those problems, 
uh, you will probably need to extend your feedback collection uh, activities and on top of those surveys also to add other activities like uh, like to do a few interviews with your uh, typical customers or uh, unsatisfied customers or to do more specific surveys on some specific uh, problematic maybe touch points. And this will definitely give you much more details, much more insights. Um, in addition to that, uh, what I see is that we should not forget to add those open questions uh, in, in every survey that we are doing. So enabling other customers to tell open comments so why are they are giving the score? What frustrates them the most in, in, in our performance, in our services? And, uh, and what could be better? So this also will, uh, will guide us to more clear, clear direction. And you can also approach uh, more creatively all this process and to do like uh, a forum, a discussion with your customers. Uh, at One Click Factory, we used to, to do so-called uh, partner council events, uh, like real uh, life events uh, when it was possible, uh, where we used to invite like uh, 10, 15 other customers, other partners from different regions to discuss uh, uh, what challenges do they face in their markets and how One Click Factory services could help them to better meet those uh, goals. And actually it worked very well. It worked as a very valuable source to feed our decisions, to feed our ideas for innovations and in our products and our services. So this could be also a direction to go. And, uh, and finally, I should say that probably all this feedback that you collect is uh, as valuable as much your business is able to take action out of all this feedback. And uh, it's really important to build a process how you work with this feedback and how you act on this feedback. So bring this feedback, uh, whatever you have from whatever channel to your management team, to your functional teams, uh, discuss it together, define priorities, you won't be able probably to do everything that your customers are asking. So you need to choose probably, I don't know, three, four or five areas you would like to focus on uh, to enhance your performance and, uh, and act on it. And uh, one maybe more last thing, uh, but very important in all this, in, in all this process is uh, to communicate back to your customers uh, what you are going to do out of all this feedback collected. Uh, as an example, at, at One Click Factory, we are doing so-called uh, partner experience reports. So that means that after each survey, uh, regular survey we do, we, uh, uh, we develop a report, like a summary of uh, survey insights, and also add our plans, so what we are going to to innovate in our services based on, on this feedback collected. And uh, we share all this information with our partners. And I think this is very important uh, step in all this process, uh, which creates a kind of uh, belief in customers that you truly listen, that you are willing to act. And it also gives some kind of extra motivation for your customers to to participate in your future feedback collection activities. Yeah, basically this is my comment. So put the customer uh, in the in the loop as well. Put some ownership yeah, on his for side, sure. right? Okay, thank you. And then lastly, we have the most important topic. So what does in, uh, what elements increase uh, the loyalty for our customers? At least what do the Central East and Europe partners uh, find as most valuable ones? Um, and even, even though, uh, well, everybody marked that they are giving away some uh, uh, discounts or uh, the volume or gifts, uh, uh, from uh, to summarize of what the key aspects uh, I heard partners saying, they mentioned that uh, 
it is that it's it is quality and experience uh, that they really find um, as uh, probably most important uh, and most valuable thing for their customers. Also, there was one interesting thing. By the way, I will share that. Almost every partner that I talked to, I already mentioned this, said we don't have a uh, customer retention. Um, uh, uh, it's almost uh, zero. We get all those uh, bad experience customers coming over to us from other competitors, but not <laughs> from us. And I was then going, okay, so where do this <laughs> that the partners live? <laughs> so I, nobody I, I is think, losing the customer. <laughs> nobody is nobody. losing. They are, they are only gaining. So it's either I questioned the top partners from the region, which might be the case that only these partners uh, volunteered to contribute, or I was very successful <laughs> to talk to the partners who don't have any retention chain. But so, but quality was one of the things uh, that they mentioned. Uh, they also mentioned that they are giving away discounts and um, uh, gifts, but they haven't noticed that they that would increase the loyalty. Uh, it's something that um, they do by default because they think it's uh, it's it's good to do, but not that they would find that uh, it increases um, uh, the loyalty. Also, let me check uh, honesty and keeping promises. Um, uh, this is something that quite many uh, partners. Um, commented and said uh, we are all even if we lose business we try to keep our promises we want the uh, customers to trust us they want uh, to know that they can count that we are not going to leave their bag uh, the same personal attention that our customers know that they can have direct access uh, to the consultants, that they know that it will be human um, escalation process, not something uh, robotic. This was mentioned quite many times. And again, Sandra, over to you. Do you think and would you find these trends and these comments similar what you would hear to the trends of uh, Western countries? Uh, where is this retention um, and loyalty? Uh, processes uh, going so what i see from the insights shared by ce partners so i um, i see that they match well the global trends uh, where traditionally the key drivers of uh, customer loyalty have been quality convenience uh, good customer service or customer experience and overall and uh, if uh, if to take a look at the global researches done around customer loyalty, <clears throat> and I just had to look at one made by a KPMG research company, so uh, which surveyed like thousands of, of customers globally around customer loyalty and what makes them coming back. I see that uh, more than 70% of customers said that it was uh, quality of a product or service which inspired the loyalty and uh, uh, more than 50 percent said that it was good customer service uh, which made them to to stick around so naturally quality of a product of a service is probably the foundation of uh, good customer satisfaction and uh, no other incentive or loyalty program probably would compensate if you don't have a good quality of, of a product or service. Uh, looking ahead, I think companies also need to consider such things as uh, purpose, social and uh, environmental responsibilities of company, and data security as these elements become a kind of important in the customer decision-making process. And according to the same uh, global researches that I just mentioned, uh, so there is uh, like a trend that there is more and more customers stating that they prefer choosing truly purpose-driven brands over the less purpose-driven brands. And with this purpose-driven element, they mean companies who, who stand for something more than a profit alone, who takes social responsibility seriously and... Uh, uh, contributes to local communities and uh, also there is a trend that there is more and more people uh, preferring to donate their loyalty rewards uh, for a good cause like a charity or some environmental initiative rather than using it personally or for their businesses and this is especially uh, vital among young generation, like, like uh, young people entering the job market nowadays and uh, 
becoming the new decision makers generation in the B2B area as well. So, so this kind of emotional engagement among company and the customer becomes uh, critical, not so much nice to have, but like a need to have element. Yes. I must say that I haven't, I, I didn't hear anyone mentioning this um, social contribution factor as building loyalty. So this might be something for partners to consider because I believe that this trend will come to Central Eastern Europe as well, even though uh, we are not maybe seeing it yet. Uh, Rainis, uh, from you, uh, we we don't have too much time left. So from your side, I would like to ask what what is the key drivers for you to uh, to build loyalty? And if there is one thing that you would like the audience to have, what this recommendation regarding loyalty be? Well, uh, yes, this is. I think it's a really really important question. Uh, and and at this point, we have the the, the most popular discount for volume uh, loyalty system in our company and it's uh, more than uh, 10 years old and, uh, and 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 we are really currently focusing on, on transferring this, that and understanding what can uh, can bring uh, more attention to our customers and and what can bring more value to the customers so I think that the, that, that the, the loyalty grows when, when you when you provide services or or value to the customer, which can be utilized in the long run, so so you have to think not like in today's perspective, but in in years perspective, or how does that will stick to the customer? Will it make the customer uh, more uh, your company more appealing to the customer, and will customer use this uh, these services in, in the long run so so my recommendation would be to to experiment to 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 try things out and to of course one of the key aspects to talk to your customer start talking to your customer and understanding what do they value or listening to the customer maybe even better yeah, and hearing, talking you know, and <laughs> listening and taking into account and acting afterwards. Of course, of course. <laughs> That's the first, first step talking and of course you're totally true and and and, and listening, listening, listening to your yeah. customers, of course. <laughs> Thank you, Rainis. Rinvidas, what would be your two cents to that conversation to add to the building loyalty for your customers? So nothing will replace the fundamental all good service to your customers. As, as Raina said, no, whatever loyalty program you may have, how many questionnaires you do, if you do not provide a, a great service, that would that wouldn't work. Now, uh, so 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 great service is 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 is, the, is always is always the key. But no, it should be you know you should think of like not good service but from good to great right so and that you no know, extra step makes a, lo a lot of difference right? and again i would just repeat you know, if, if you show that you care about your customers that you take an extra effort maybe sometimes it's not profitable for you at all but that's what they value that that's what they would see that they you really care about about uh, about them of course there will be like different kind of situations some of the customers might might better leave if they are not profitable at all right you should not you should not go for like 100% loyalty maybe some of them just let them go uh, but uh, yeah so once again to stress good service and some extra efforts to show that uh, you care about your customers Thank you, everybody, for sharing. I really hope and thank you for joining, of course, the dear partners. I hope you found those insights as well as report and some more insights valuable for you. As always, we would like to invite you to join One Click Factory CSP Acceleration Program. There are no commitments for you to, as a partner, but by joining um, the program, you would assure that you get more than 100 experts of various dynamics uh, kinds, Asia professionals, that is Rinvidas team responsible for or Business Central, um, the upgrade team, uh, 
FNO side, finance and supply chain management, uh, uh, licenses, sales, marketing. So we are at, uh, the experts of dynamics and we are ready to help you understand of what is the dynamics ecosystem and how can you uh, build more of your dynamics business. I would also like to invite you to another discussion, the last dis uh, discussion be before we go into summer vacation. Uh, we accepted the challenge that Dovidas from Columbus, Lithuania gave us, uh, bring the topic of app source. Where's my money while uh, submitting the solution to the app source? So we are, we are going to dive deep into that uh, topic uh, next month. And I think especially that topic is valuable now as Microsoft had changed the, the rules uh, for um, the object uh, cost of the objects and now all the solutions need to be certified and need to be appear on app source so i would still invite you to join this uh, last discussion uh, and uh, hear what experts would have um, uh, to say if you would be interested in downloading the certification program please it's in the handout session and with that once again Sandra Reynes, thank you so much for contribution i look forward to uh, other events that we have with you Bye-bye, everybody. Thank Thanks, bye -bye. and bye, everyone. See you. See you.